Hi class, this is week 4 and we want to talk about design. One of the design activities that we work on is designing database. The picture you see here in front of you has uh, on the left a house and on the right a floor plan. Now if I wanted to know how many bedrooms, uh, how many levels your house has, I could get that information by looking at the floor plan. But if I wanted to see where exactly you have placed your TV set or sets, I could not get that information from looking at the floor plan. I should get into your house. That's the difference between database um, and database schema. So a house would be your database, which has the actual data and information in it, and the floor plan will be your schema it shows the structure it shows the connections but it doesn't show the data itself um, so a database management system usually consists of your data and this schema which is data about data how the data is structured some people call it uh, metadata and there is an access and control logic there are different ways to interact with the database um, and there are different interfaces for that. This is a general design. Um, uh, there are more traditional database management systems and there are more innovative database management systems. But you could imagine these components, they will appear in one form or shape in all database management systems. And what we focus on in this course is a relational database in which you store data in two uh, dimensional structures. We call them tables. You have seen tables in other classes in your workplaces, and they um, are they have two dimensions. Uh, in the first row, you see the headers for your um, um, columns. Um, and then each row shows a record or an observation that you care to keep track of. So if this is a cell, um, it would be one of the cells. If this is a library, one uh, um, um, uh, borrowing record. Um, so you have your two dimensions. You have your rows, records, or tuples. You have your columns. They are attributes or fields. And the headers, they define. They help you understand what those uh, columns are about. And uh, the value that you give to each column at each row, it's the value of that attribute for that specific observation. So how is it that we can go from a domain model class diagram to a uh, schema for a relational database um, and um, it could be a magic stick but um, it's actually a process and we talk about that process keep in mind that we're not talking about the data itself so you see data here but we don't care about that at this time we just care about the number of tables how different tables are connected and what is inside each Table. So that is your database schema. The number of tables, what is inside each table, and how different tables are connected. Um, the process is very simple, uh, but it actually has a lot of details um, that we could learn by working with a database management system. We used to work with Microsoft Access, but I'm looking for a way to make it easier for you. So. Um, uh, we'll see what I uh, find out about a free uh, or uh, something that we could have access to more easily. Uh, we would create a table for each class. We would choose a primary key. Primary key is a field or an attribute that helps you identify one and only one row. Uh, inside each table. So if I am a university and I have your university identification number, I can find you and there will be nobody else with that number. That's a primary key. Those are very fundamental ideas in database design and each table requires a primary key or a number of attributes together can be a primary key. We would call it a composite primary key. Foreign keys to represent one to many relationships. So we told you in a schema you should show how different tables are connected and DBMS there is uh, they uh, in DBMS they give you features to 
make those connections happen now on paper and pencil we would add foreign keys but how do these foreign keys work and how do they help you connect tables this is something we would need to see in the lab if you have many too many associations you would need to create new tables for them some of you have already done that some of you have added association tables for your many too many association i was talking to uh, David and he has an appointment and that's an association class for the many to many relationship between a physician and a patient um, on Mars so the appointment is that association class if you thought about them last week or not it it doesn't matter you have to have them here in your database schema we talked about referential integrity so these different attributes from uh, one table referring to uh, attributes to the other table there should be integrity um, uh, there should be integrity among them so the values must be consistent so what is that we'll talk about that a schema quality I'm going to talk about that in another video and then data types and value restrictions so some of you said I'm not going to let more than 10 engineers work on a rocket so that's a restriction and you're going to make sure you impose that restriction when you design your database schema this is an example of a domain model class diagram and if you wanted to create one table for each class do a primary key uh, uh, or assign a primary key for each table if you see an attribute in your domain model classes that are good candidates for primary keys good if not you would need to invent primary keys then we're going to show one too many associations by adding foreign keys um, and then we don't have any many too many associations here but we're going to make sure we review that in another example so this is a many to this is a one to many association so a product item has gender description supplier manufacturing and a picture and then when it goes to inventory it will be associated with many inventory items each of them are for a specific size and color and option and then you keep the quantity for that specific version of your product now if you have a, your database, a relational database, you would have a table for product, you would have a table for inventory, you would have your primary keys and usually we name primary keys as um, IDs. That's the way uh, the tradition has been in software. So if, it, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's named ID, it means that it's a unique uh, identifier which is the definition of primary keys. Now. When we say foreign keys, um, that goes uh, from the one side to the many side. You get the primary key of one side. You add it as an additional attribute to the many side. So that's the idea. They could be named the same thing or they could have different names. It doesn't matter. Database management system have a way to deal with different names if you choose to do so. But the idea is that you have this key here from the one side added to the many side as an additional attribute and you call it a foreign key on paper we would say fk on dbms there is a way to say this is a foreign key this is not an independent attribute now here i am in my inventory i'm looking at a khaki um, a, a product with the color khaki and this quantity and this size and i wanted to know who is um, the supplier or what is the description of this item I have this foreign key and I use that to in find the information about that product in the product item table because this foreign key is a primary key in that original table you will find one and only one rows and then you would know that these are your uh, products um, for men with this description so a key from the one side added to the table for the many side it's your foreign key and it helps you retrieve information that you have in the one side and you need it for some reason so the same idea here you would add the 
primary key of the one side to the table on the many side. One side, many side, primary key of this one goes to alert condition. Primary key of alert condition goes to alert. Primary key of patient goes to cell phone. Primary key of patient goes to glucose observation. And the result is this. So you have your primary keys and these are your foreign keys these are the primary keys of other tables they have come to this table as a foreign key why because they're going to help you uh, make the connection how so if i'm a patient i go to the emergency room they have my patient id but they don't have the phone number of my doctor on my record but they have the physician id so they have they get the physician id they query the table for the physician and because this is a primary key they will find one and only one physician with that id they retrieve the phone number and they call my doctor if um, they need my doctor what do we do with many to many associations there are three ways to deal with them you can create a separate table for uh, each concrete class you can create a table for the whole hierarchy or you can take this route we're going to talk about that when we go um, to the lab um, but many to many associations are easy we create a third table and we're going to show that to you this is all and i'll see you soon